Right, hello everybody and welcome to Between Two Fans. And uh, it is a very chilly morning here in, it's actually nonsense. Um, I'm sitting here in sunny South Africa, very common sunny South Africa, with layers on layers. And Mr. Dan Scott is all the way in the UK in his short sleeve. Well, I don't know if it's a short sleeve or the sleeves are pulled up, but wearing basically. <laughs> and this is no, not why I live in Dan Africa. Confirmed. Yeah, she. <laughs> Dan, I mean, for me, I start, we started chatting, it was zero degrees, gone up to two degrees, so that's kind of summing up my life at the moment. How are you? Well, you're, you're on the upper trajectory, Stevie. Um, no, I'm, I'm very well. I, t- I still yet to see a lot of sun in the summer. A um, lot, lot of gray skies, um, but can't complain if it's, if it's short sleeves. But uh, this time next week, I will be in Sicily, so your boy will be cooking there um so not a lot to complain about um from my side so so we're potting from sicily with a little background what's what's the chat we, we're going on tour we're going on tour <laughs> i might be on, may or may not be on a beach but there we go jeepers I mean, like i said we're going on tour i mean i'm gonna be <laughs> it's it's uh you know i'm bringing you with me bro there we come go. to 50, the beach 50 percent of the podcast is on tour <laughs> exactly yeah Right. Well, Dan, uh, lots of sport to talk about. Um, it's been a it's been a very it's a long sporting weekend. Lots of very busy things happening. Um, I believe. Uh, well, I played cricket this weekend. Did you play cricket this weekend, Stevie? I did, and let me tell you, it was blockbuster. Let me just walk you through this. So it's last man stands. Yeah, yeah. For those who haven't played last man stands, it's seven aside. Um, overs only five balls long and wides after your first wide they count for like three runs and they also count towards the batsman by the way which is hilarious because you have to retire at 50 but half of the you could be on 20 actually off the bat and the rest could be wides but essentially defending 165 first of all i was given out must have missed the ball by half a meter but given out um so it wasn't a good start to the day but we're defending one six seven. They need five to win off the last um, of the last over, and then three to win off the last ball. They run a two. The umpire says, "Cool, we can call it a tie, or we can go to a super over, um, and then we'll just." I'm not supposed to do this, but we'll just give the team a, a, a run, an extra run at the end. So, yeah. we're like, of course, we're going to do a super over. Are you mad? Um, and in last man stands, there's a, a rule that if the last ball of your innings. Yeah, it gets hit for six, it doubles. So yeah, it doesn't well, work on any other runs. It's not like if you run two, you get four, or four, you get eight. It's only a six, you get double, which is 12. So our boat has done unbelievably, bro. He's got, they're on like five off the first four balls, and then bang, six. smashes it, bro. Six. So they, it was like, now it's like 17 to win. We send in two oaks. I'm like the third batsman waiting to, um, Go in in case there's a wicket fulfilling my my square leg umpire duties, um, yeah. and so first couple of balls I get one away. There's a four here and a single. We need twelve of the last, bro. Runs in straight over the bowler's head. Six That's runs. Nice. I just start fucking screaming from square leg umpire. Relinquish those responsibilities. Yeah, that, and, dude. And, fuck, what a way actually, to finish the weekend, bro. Oh, it felt so good. I was just went cool. home and smiling with a smile. Um, went home sleeping with a smile on my face. Oh, it was, it was unbelievable. Um, so th- those are just my own pr- triumphs, bro. Um, yeah, well, well, not that I was. Nice. And yeah, and I, you? I, what happened in your cricket match? <laughs> tough, tough, tough weekend out here. Uh, we we bottled our first game. Um, we dropped Ooh. a guy on twenty, like a dolly. Oh. We him again on forty, also a dolly. And I know the guy that dropped on before he does listen to the podcast. So, yes, it was a dolly. He has broken his finger, though, however. So, I do feel sorry. For, not from the catch, from, from, from when he was batting. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's good payback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we dropped this guy. I was mean, playing against team. We only had three bats. So we got the we ran out the one without even facing a ball. We had the other one. We had them, in, like, in, yeah, we were all over them. So, I dropped this guy in 20 and 40. He scores 99. Um, so, what should have been about 110 target at most ended up being 200. Um, which we came okay. reasonably short. Yeah, and then we had another team about four for two. And in all sorts, we'd already dropped like three catches, but we are now playing in about six degree weather. It is literally <laughs> raining, um, <laughs> having the absolute worst time of my life. But now we're all over these guys. And we're like, yo, if we can get another four or five overs and we'll skittle these guys because they were at all sorts. Um, and then like, it's kind of spitting down. And like, no, it's getting a bit hard. Like bring the covers on. 
And um, we're like, listen, the covers are wet, eh? Like, no, bring the covers on. <laughs> bring the covers on. Stops raining. Take the covers off. Now the pitch is no soaking. Way. Yeah. Oh god. Like, well, thanks, guys. You know. And then look, to match credit, abandoned. But, yeah, yeah. So match abandoned. But an hour later, it was pouring with rain. So chance, sorry, probably wouldn't have gotten a game in. But the way it was going, it could have an hour could have been enough to be honest. So Good. we've got a big game this weekend. Sunday is uh, is basically effectively a knockout. If we can thrash the team we're playing, then we can go into semis. We win that semis, and you will see Steve tossing a coin at the DP World Wonders Stadium. Wow. And it's what's on the that cards. That is absolutely massive. Bro, you see the pods on tour. You go to Wonders, <laughs> I go to Sicily. Bro, we, we, we have our different roles here. I mean, you, you can know, have roles here. I get Sicily if you want. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind swapping next time, to be fair. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but Steve, unfortunately, we didn't make predictions um, on our own sporting achievements. Uh, we did on the, on the big guns of the world. And let's revisit those at the, of the ones that we made last week. For those who are new around here, Stevie and I are on the race um, to 15 correct predictions or prediction wins. And we, we predict on three um, of the hardest sporting fixtures of the weekend. Last weekend, we included the Champions League final, Stormers versus Lions in the final weekend of the URC, and South Africa versus Sri Lanka in their opening fixture of the G20 World Cup. Um, we will be going through um, on the show the URC knockouts, the Premiership final um, was to come with the Euros and a recount of the Champions League final and then everything you need to know about the um, Cricket World Cup, its new format and whilst touching on a little bit of Roland Garros. But Stevie, let's get into um, those predictions of ours. And, and the first one is a little bit confusing because we're kind of stuck in the middle. The Champions League final ending um, 2-0 to Hala Madrid as they lifted their 15th um, Champions League trophy ever. I mean, it's just, they're just masters of the competition. And um, um, Carlo is just ridiculous. Don Carlo, bro. Don Carlo's back, dude. That yeah, I think, so I think he should be, so. I think he should be upgraded to Um, bro. Because he's, if he was South African, he would be Um Carlo. So bro. he's so um, um, so you got like Rassi Erasmus, you got Um Rassi, Um Jacques, he, um, um Carlo. Exactly. Um Carlo, bro. Um Carlo. Imagine you're in um, South Africa and you just got to say, say, yeah, uh, morning Um. Like, what the hell's yeah, 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 exactly. But Danny Carvajal and Vinny Jr. scoring their two goals in the second half there. Um, Stevie, my prediction was 2-1 Madrid and yours was 1-0 Madrid. So we both are goal off. So I think we can maybe, I'm not sure, but le le let's go through the rest of the fixtures if we want to then revisit that. We might have to ask um, the the audience um, who deserves that, that the win or the point for that one. Next one was Storm and Lions. And I'm not going to get too much into the game because I think we're going to jump into that when we go right into the URC. But yeah, I'm not going to go my in score was 29-24 um stormers winning um by five points stevie my prediction of stormers by seven yours was lions by 10 so i'm going to go ahead and take that one um in the second fixture and the last fixture was south africa versus sri lanka south africa ended up winning by six wickets yesterday um stevie my prediction was either 30 runs or five wickets yours was 22 runs or four wickets so i'm going to go ahead and take that one and I, you know I what i'm taking that one to be honest take it you take up the proteas up, yeah, up the Proteas, anything bigger for them. And this is an astounding. From 8-2, it's now 9-8, Stevie. The yeah, comeback, listen, you are slide. No, but you're in trouble now because Manchester United are out of the, out of the predictions for a while, as, uh, <laughs> as, as are the Lions. So all my emotional picks of backing United to win and the Lions to win, but, that's finished and, now. So now emotion's out of it. And at least we, at least we'll both predict the Proteus to win the World Cup. So there's, we both yeah. in that boat sinking together. Yeah. So, so, we're, yeah. so, we're, so, we're, so we, I mean, one, one prediction a week is going to be basically the best of a bad, 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 bad prediction. And we can start to use our brains. Yeah, no, I can actually start uh, demonstrating my sporting prowess now, not just my, my unashamed bias towards my local teams, which are buckling. Must must be biased. There must be biased. This is why Correct. we're sports fans, bro. Um, and and speaking of of. This weekend's fixtures and a bit of bias. Stevie, let's dive right into the last weekend of the URC because I know I was I was giving the boys a lot of shit on <laughs> on Saturday. Um, I actually I missed the the Stormers game, but when I saw when I saw the result, I actually I, I didn't realize. I mean, we completely wrote off Ospreys. We we've done this this podcast a complete disservice 
just not even mentioning them in this in this top eight uh, race. Really, we had ruled they deserve, them out. They, they deserve to be ruled out. They should never have been in there for a second. They should never, they should never. Even the Osprey fans are like, I don't know how we. I don't know. I don't know what we're they, doing there, guys. I don't know how we managed to do this. Yeah, well, I saw I saw the Stormers beat the the Lions, but it wasn't like a massive. So we're still getting a, a losing bonus point at that. So I was like, okay, well, that, that should be enough because I saw Edinburgh um, got um, clapped by Benetton. Well, that was the but thing. No. That no, no, nobody expected the Edinburgh to get no points. Yeah. You know? um, I said that it was, was a high-scoring game between the Stormers and the Lions, which it was threatening to be. And, and it was decent. You still, I mean, 20-something yeah, points I mean, but I was, I was expecting to see both, like both 40s, teams like, yeah. walking away with, yeah, with, with, yeah. With, 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 with bonus points and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's one bloody game that Cardiff could just not be useless and win. Oh, maybe, man. Maybe it was, last and it was game such a good game. Co- yeah, it was and, such and, a and good game. That, even with that the Tipperick try. Oh, my word. Yeah. I think that could be try of the season. I mean, what a finish. Like, the hands yeah. to get it down, the offloads. And then just because it's Tipperick who finishes it off, it's like there's nothing more more life yeah. for about um, that oak than than anyone else in Wales for me. Um, but Stevie, yeah, no com- commiserations, and yeah, I'll, <laughs> uh, the, the, I was receiving a little bit bit of hate when I found out that <laughs> there was the Ospreys that snuck ahead of you on Saturday. Um, it, it was it, I did quite it find quite amusing at the time, but um, yeah, so. Let's let's quickly um, just get through some of the results and where that leaves us with the top eight. Um, first of all, Leinster getting the job done, beating Connacht on Friday night in kind of mostly a second string team, one or two first team, um, typical Leinster first team players slotting in there. And at that point, they were actually sitting top of the lob, I believe. Yeah. Um, so it meant that the Bulls and um, and Munster had to show up, which they both did. Bulls beating the Sharks 26 points to 14, despite the Sharks playing a very strong side. But I yeah. think they were all severely hungover um, and dehydrated. Well, Sharks, Sharks but, played well, to be fair. I think there were, there were times where Bulls didn't look as convincing as Bulls have over the season. Um, their front row, Desmay, the Sharks front row, which was interesting. Yeah. Um, not yeah. something that you really want to see as a Bulk fan. Um, I saw somebody no. the other day talking about our Oxford chair. You know, there's question marks over him. I said, dude, no, 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 calm down. The calm, recency calm, bias. Calm, 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 yeah. I think I think that's my pet hate in sports fans. And he's just won he's just won the Sharks ever um international First, tournament. Yeah. But like he, he's him and Vincent Cop. Vincent Cop handling one of the English game last year. We would not yeah. be world champions if it wasn't for Ox and Chase efforts in that World Cup. For me he's the best number one in the world at the moment, like form. So pi- if pi- that's pi- I I I'll choose that recency bias over the, the last match he's played. Yeah. Um after spending a week on the brandy. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, I think we can put it down to that, not anything else. But then Glasgow also getting it done uh, versus Zebra. Not all too convincingly, to be fair. 38 yeah. points to 226. Um, Zebra, to be fair, they've been scoring a lot of points this season, just not quite yeah. enough to get uh, enough wins under the belt. But promising signs, to be fair, could could see a little resurgence, as we have seen. Much, much better season. than the, week, the season before, you know, I think. At the, much at better. Not, they're, they're compared to Sarge, you know, you you do you go there, and if you're yeah. not at your best, they can take points with you, which is which is nice. I feel like the only, like, the n- noticeable teams to go backwards this season have been Dragon Scarlet Sharks. And yeah. Zebra, They yes, they finished last, and one Connacht win, probably. one draw, and it doesn't look pretty. Yeah, and Connacht. But I think Connacht, they, they were still competitive. They still, like, yeah. on, on outside charts could have made top eight. Um, yeah, Zebra doesn't look pretty, but, you know, and neither does the negative 298 points against them. But yeah. I think there they are a couple wins in that well, bottom half of the not table. The worst, not could. the worst points difference. No, it's not. It's not. That goes to the drags, unfortunately. <laughs> um, who, they were horrible this um, season. Who went down to the Scarlet 32-15. Um, and obviously the, the a big one, <clears throat> big statement this weekend was Benetton versus Edinburgh, 31 points to six. I mean, Edinburgh were just throwing that ball around like they, they just couldn't help but want to get it out wide, taking line, um, throw-ins early. Um, I mean, the, Benetton largely just scored off of loose ball and, and counter-attacks because... Um, Edinburgh weren't very um, weren't holding on to the ball and almost trying to do too much. Uh, something we've seen like the Stormers be a little bit guilty of more towards the beginning of the season. Um, but very very stoked for Benetton that secured them a top top eight finish, um, coming seventh in the end. 
um, which is awesome to see because it's great to have um, representation from all the countries because now we have well South African, I- Irish, and Italian all in the um, in the top eight, which is which is exactly what you want. Um, you know, it's what the tournament's about. No, you, so don't. Every... you want three South, you want you want three South African teams in there. Don't come here mm-hmm. with us. Oh, we want representation. No, no, Bru, I'm sorry, Tipperick's my guy now. You you guys got. Got beaten to the chase. Um, but the last two fixtures, Munster versus Ulster. Um, Munster getting it down to secure number one spot. Close mm-hmm. game, though, 29 points to 24. Um, so they are in pole position to have a home final if they get all the way through their quarters and semis. And then, of course, as we mentioned, Ospreys winning versus away to Cardiff, 33 points to 29. Um, Stevie, I mean... You've obviously just slid out. You finished, so it, it ends. You know you're on the exact same amount of points as Ospreys, mm-hmm. and you called it a while back. So Lions aren't going to go through because of the amount of wins under their yeah. belt, and that's exactly what happened. We're looking, you both, you and Ospreys, both on fifty points. Your points difference is 128 to the better. Well, it's 120 points positive theirs is negative 35 no, no, you have I mean, 14 it's... bonus points they have 10 they just have that one extra win and you have that one extra loss so i mean it's got to be a tough pull to swallow it hurts and, and, I, and I, i've 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 been saying this constantly you know it just sounds like sour grapes when i talk about it but i really don't like the more wins thing um i'm a big i'm a big advocate for points difference because it encourages you to try and be aggressive. It try it encourages you to try and score tries. Um, you know, go high. You know, and I think that's what people keep sort of saying. You know, that they want. I mean, even though all in all is about you know ball and play. For example, encouraging attacking rugby, encouraging, um, you know, cool. I mean, you know, lots of lots of points and stuff like that. So, you know, more wins now. You know, you look back and you think, okay, so there's certain games mm-hmm. where and, and the annoying thing is, I think this is what the Lions are trying to do in the last month. But it was too late where suddenly they started being far more conservative because I think, I don't know if somebody just didn't tell them the rules, um, but all of a sudden we were taking three points a lot during these last few games instead of trying to push for the bonus point, trying to push for those four tries. And the same thing on Saturday, you know, we turned, we took, we had a penalty, for what, about 50 minutes before the end um, and right up against the, the, the touchline, took the points, missed it, you know. Um, if we had just mm-hmm. kicked a goal, had a bit of momentum, playing against 14 men as well. Scored a try there, yeah. and ten minutes later had another thing right in front of the poles. After we had just had like seventeen phases of just literally being kept up by inches, had momentum, had it gone through about 10, 11 phases, looking really good. You know, didn't take the, didn't, didn't try to go for the try. Um, took the three points, conceded almost immediately off kickoff, and that was what was the difference in the end. So, you know, yeah, and and yeah. and I also feel as much as you went or Stormers went down to fourteen points, obviously a horrible tackle by Angelo Davis on on Snell and Ahamba. Um, and you know, there was obviously a big scuffle they went on afterwards. It was definitely, it wasn't malicious, but it was just, it was a bit reckless, um, yeah. from Andrew Davis. You could cut, you could just see it from a mile away. It was just coming. Like yeah. you just knew that balls floated and they were coming at pace. It was just always going to end badly. Um, but I actually, to an extent, uh, the person Lions would have wanted on the field the most having gone being playing against 40 men is no humble. Yeah. You know, he's the one who's able to exploit the the space the most. So as much as you had that advantage, I don't think you were able to necessarily take advantage, take advantage of it because um, the one, your, your creative um, player wasn't able to kind of unlock the space that was, that was then open. Um, um, yeah, and and card, frustrating that, that, you know, the Mario's a yellow card. Look, I do think, we need to review Angela David's reaction from the push. I think it was a little bit over the top. Um, but it was so stupid by Marius Lowe. You know, you've just seen a tackle, which is a red card. Like, in real time, you're going, cool, that's the, that's them 14 men for the rest of the game. No need yeah. to engage. And to get a yellow card for for that was was frustrating because there would have been a good, I think it would have been about 30, 33, 34 minutes that the Storms would have had to play without 14 men. Yeah. You know? Um, and you then think, right, cool, we've got the momentum, one man advantage. You know, you kick deep, you score there, you have Mario Slow running at the, into the midfield, drawing in. You can the, just take the, points, the take points straight from where the, the hit was. That's exactly where, you know, you 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 start squeezing straight away, put on points pressure um against them. But yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean he came in from steaming from like fifty meters away with a huge heave. Yeah, he, just, he, was, he was fed up, eh? He was just like, no, I've, I've, I've yeah, had he was seeing red. 
Yeah, it didn't, didn't, ha- didn't help that we had seen um, Rasmus Barnett also leave with, with a concussion also knocked out earlier. That was his fault, Morgan, in terms of tackle technique. Um, mm, but mm. yeah, I think you know, I think you know, emotions were high, and then you see a tackle like that, and you just use your cool. But it's annoying when he is the captain. I know he wasn't the yeah. I wasn't the captain at the time, but he has been the captain this season. So you know, you, no, you know, I, I feel like he's your. To me, he's your designated leader. Leader. He's he's like the. I think without him, I think he's your biggest person you'd miss were he to leave. Um, he, I feel like he just. Yeah, I think he just brings I mean, it. I mean, there is there is like. And a Humber and a Q and Horn. Yes, yes, and but I, I think I think I think the leadership abilities that he has and the way he's able to link and bring a bit more stability to a back line that's otherwise just got star players, you know, who want to just be able to, you know, play that free flowing game that Sonata and Humber and Q and Horn have become synonymous with. I think he brings. It's ironic that we're saying it now, but a little bit of level headedness yeah. <laughs> to it, and that uh, clearly. Um, when he saw um, that, that hit on the Humber, kind of lost his plot, which which all people do. Um, but yeah, I mean, now, now we've so we've got the the quarterfinals locked in, Stevie. We've got Munster um, os- hosting Ospreys this Friday. I mean, if you Ospreys, Munster. you have you have nothing to lose. You and you haven't had anything to lose for for the last little while. I mean, yeah. essentially they've they've managed to just buy. A and termination whilst everyone including us wrote them off um and managed to get through to a um a quarter final now they're going away to the number one team take a bit of momentum with you Munster they finished the season off really well but it's not like they blow out wins that they're getting right yeah. they're not winning by big points they they only they only um winning like within 10 so you know what I mean? Take, take a bit of momentum into that with you. You can always ca- try cause an upset, but um, obviously you, you are eighth going up against first, so it's, it's always going to be tough away from home. Um, then we have the Bulls hosting Benetton. Um, I think this will be a really good game. Um, it'll be interesting to see if the if Benetton can cope with the travel. They've just come back from South Africa, so now they're going to go going all the way back. They've just done that little tour there. I mean, essentially that win over Sharks for them getting them into top eight as well. Massive mm. away performance. So I think they'll take that confidence, um, knowing that they were able to do it versus a strong Sharks team um, who are who are better than what the um, points suggest or at least in this latter half of the season. Um, and then Leinster, Ulster, um, Again, I think I think I think I think Ulster. I mean, I look at Ulster, Leinster. So unfortunately, I think you know, I think it might be too much. But that Ulster side have had for all of their their struggles, they're starting to really come right in, in the last in the last few weeks. And I think yeah. if they were playing anybody but Leinster, I would say that there was a very good chance of an upset. Um, agreed, agreed. Because I think I think Leinster now they 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 have to go full on for the URC, surely. Well, they if, haven't won if, if they don't, since COVID, you know, if they so. if they if they don't go full in on the URC. I want to hear every single person that questioned the Bulls about Champions Cup, um, you know, lineups and not sending a good team out. Yeah. I want to hear every single one of them up in arms about Leinster if they don't play a full team. Because if they what don't, I'd, then it's What I'd love to see this is, is to see them lose because they had to go like away for the semifinal. Like come down to Johannesburg and lose, well, to Pretoria and then lose to the Bulls. Yeah. And yeah. you said the game, well, you could have had it first, but you decided to send your academy team to South Africa. You know, we're now where's those people for the competition? Yep. I mean, I, I heard earlier, I think Jamie Gibson Park has played three RC games a season. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's, it's ridiculous. Um, good if you the second scrum off at Leinster, but jeez. Um, but yeah, so Leinster will be hosting Ulster. Obviously, a really tough task for Ulster. And, and I do think Leinster will, well, they should play a, a really strong team because it's the, it's the last remaining. One, it does feel a little bit weird that the Champions Cup comes before this. I do yeah. feel like it should be like the last game of the season, but like the Champions League final, the biggest game, the last game, um, which is what's happened previously, which is why Leinster didn't respect this competition because they played a second string team because they were focusing on the Champions Cup. Now they have already lost that, so they can maybe now shift their focus. And then the last game, um, Glasgow Warriors hosting the Stormers. Um, one Scottish... Um, team versus the traveling the traveling stormers previous winners both back-to-back finalists um so stormers obviously have very little chance now of of getting another home game in the tournament unless there are a lot of upsets 
which would mean that would be an absolutely insane yeah. um, USC finish if they managed to get another home game. Um, but, you know, there are a lot, lot of questions about South African teams away form, Stevie. Um, I, wanna, I wonder what your thoughts are now. Is that just a narrative or is have they kind of gotten to the point where they've matured into the Northern Hemisphere rugby and they can actually, you know, compete? Look, I think what... <sighs> Yeah, it's I mean, an interesting one. I, I don't, I don't think Storm has generally travelled very well. They've, they've struggled, um, and I think a lot of it is condition based. You know, when they go over and it's, it's windy, it's wet. You know, forty pitches, for example. I think Storm is our side that have struggled. I think certain sides are starting to adapt. I was very, very happy with what I've seen from the Lions this season away. Um, we've been mm. competitive in all, but I mean that Ospreys game, ironically, um, where the Lions just didn't pitch up. But I mean, they hammered Connacht away with fourteen men. Um, they were within seven points to Edinburgh. They were within seven points to, I forget who it was in that other tour. But the Lions have traveled very nicely so far this season. Um, so I think yeah, certainly. The, 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 the storm has started are, horribly. The storm yeah. has started horribly. I think they lost their first three games, which were all away. Yeah, they, had, um, they, they beat they beat the they Lions lost, and then they went and they went on tour. And they, yeah, and they exactly. They lost to Cardiff. Um, and I think they lost to Cardiff. Um, might have been Connacht. Um, there were a couple, uh, and 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 all teams that, you know, we've probably finished above on on the log, um, but weren't able to um, kind of get the job done. I forget uh, Glasgow. Is that a four G pitch? Um, I think it might be. I don't know where. I don't know where. I don't. I don't think that suits us as much as we play a fast brand of rugby, um, and and I think speed. You know, you would think would be advantageous but i just whenever i see a 4g pitch and south africans yeah, playing I on think, it I think i'm just not convinced. Down, i think i think i think it is a 4g pitch it's yeah down. i think i think you're right i think it is um it's always those floodlights that don't seem quite bright enough as well there are definitely certain amount of games when i watch in these smaller stadiums and i'm like i feel like slide it up folks I feel like Please. i'm watching a university game you know like the old, <laughs> yeah. the old grade field this is a great field yeah yeah <laughs> Bro, come on it's like just switch all the lights on people need to come with phone lights you know what i mean something yeah. because because it, it, it's not it doesn't seem quite right when you when you can't when you can't really see who's on the opposite wing um and <laughs> your number 11 is yeah. um but yeah that, that those are that'll be the roundup of the quarterfinals um this weekend so we're really very excited for that i think um after that we'll have a have a really good idea of where the fight is or that we'll know where the semifinals will be and probably the likelihood of where the finals are. But Stevie, let's go into the English premiership. We have a final this weekend and two blockbuster semifinals. Um, Northampton um, just beating Saracens 22 points to 20 and Bath um, getting past sales 31 points to 23. Big gap in the end, but a, a very, very close game right down to the finish. Yeah, I could... I mean, at the end of the day, you sign Finn Russell, this is what you get. You know, you get premiership yeah. rugby finals, um, as well as Thomas Toy, um, obviously. Thomas but, yeah. Toy, um, who's their number one prop as well. Um, he's been really good. I think he's been called up to the to the, to the the English side. Um, yeah, the, 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 that Bath team looks looks unbelievable. They're, they're, they're gelling. And yeah, I think this season has highlighted what a fly half can mean and it's not just Finn Russell at Bath there you know there are a lot of players that are that are pulling weight there but I just if you think uh, the Siamasuku example at Sharks and how that's turned literally did a U-turn on their season they couldn't have dreamed of actually winning the Challenge Cup before he came into form and I saw last night at their awards dinners he won a couple couple different um, awards so just another kind of feather in his cap but and then he now Finn Russell like being that being that um fly half figure and just gelling um the Bath team and, and getting them to to the semi-finals versus a sale that's pretty much half South African at this point yeah look I mean sale I mean, they've always they've always had a very strong uh, South African contingent that did help when uh, they signed Clue de Perez they used to have a lot more when, when Lord Diago was obviously there Fab Tukler was obviously still there so yeah um, but yeah, I mean, I think I'm just looking at at, at Finn's stats here um, in in the Premiership. Um, you know, and, and the, he's got 144 points so far this season. Um, you know, he's averaging about 10 points a game. Um, so he's he's made he's made a big difference. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, and 
I think he's also. I think he's. I think he's such a mature player these days. I've, I mean, I've always enjoyed Finn Russell, but he was always the Maverick type of player. And I think these days he's just. He doesn't always just want to be the hero now. Yeah, he and he's just got such a good all round game these days. You know, his defense has come in leaps and bounds. His and and his defensive awareness, not just his, his actual ability. Um, I think he's now turned. I mean, for I mean, for example, he's going to play all three British Irish Lions tests next year, and that's the, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, yeah. So. Very keen to see how he goes in the final. I think that he could be the the difference. It is obviously um, it's Finn versus Finn. Yeah, and Finn 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 Smith was back. Was, was got into the team of the season. Um, so he was he has been back. To, he has been based chosen as the best fly half of the season. So it is. But Finn Russell was nominated. So you got your two yeah. form fly halves going up against each other, which is always a fun battle. We saw an incredible Premiership final last year. So I think it should be good fun this weekend. No, it's massive, and and you know the <clears throat> the big one um, in Northampton versus Saracens was kind of Courtney Laws's final, um, you know, last dance essentially for Northampton coming through and just having played there forever as as it was Farrell's last game for Saracens. So those are like the two mavericks um, yeah. of each of those clubs really kind of going toe to toe. I mean, we just saw a little bit of of the. Um, unbelievable player Farrell is in in the last moments of the game with that little mm. assist grabber through. I mean, so good, and and it's so mm. funny. We were just chatting before this, Stevie, but it's so much easier now to be a, a Farrell fanboy now that he doesn't play international rugby because I don't need to have the the anger held back inside of me for when we play England so that I can hate him again. Um, I, you know, I don't have to reserve that hate now. I can yeah. just enjoy watching a, a good player play. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting to watching up racing next season. Yeah, I think, I mean, somebody, somebody the other day was, was talking about, you know, name that one player you hate, but would love to have played for your country. And somebody yeah. said Owen Farrell, and I said, that's, I said 100%. I said, I would love him if you're South African. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean and, and I mean, I love Andre Pollard as much as, as the next person, but, you know, Farrell would, was made for Springbok rugby. You know, yes, <laughs> yes. Dodge, can be dodgy in defense sometimes, very commas, but big physical presence at flower half. Your goal kicking yeah. is second to none. You know, Listen, good for the use, record, I don't, I would never replace Pollard with anyone. I would never replace no, Pollard but, with anyone. But, I but think if that, I were, if, I, I, I do agree. He, he fits the mold so well, right? Yeah. Physical fly half who can kick and leader. just like, yeah, leader yeah. Has, has just an unbelievable pass. Um, Oh, that flat ball of his just is is something to behold. Um, yeah, so I think I think if it was South African, we'd all absolutely love him. And, and at the end of the day, you know, you don't play hundred plus tests by accident. You don't become one of the highest scorers of British Irish Lions history by accident, and you don't become England's yeah. highest point scorer by accident. So he's an incredible rugby player, not popular in South Africa. Um, and no. you know, it, and it's always funny because you know I, I always see a different side of these players because going to the press conferences and and meeting them and stuff like that. And he is one of those players who on the pitch. You know, can be very unlikable. He's got a chirp in him. He's you know sometimes anti me a bit much, but he's a very very down to earth person. He's very he's, he's no arrogance about him. Very nice and give him a due. Even last year after the World Cup, as soon as that final whistle goes, he'll give the credit to the other team. He'll never yeah. he, not want to complain at the final whistle about things that went wrong and stuff like that. He's he's very yeah. very happy to give credit where credit's due. It's a, it's a mask that that these players have to pull on, right? They yeah. they become what like the the, the animal the or, or, yeah the, exactly and that's exactly what he is he knows exactly how to rile up um the opposition team you know he's leading like when, like when he, the, when he the, the, the cheers when english win the penalties and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that like you know and and that as when you're watching as opposition it's the worst and i wouldn't necessarily want south african teams to be necessarily cheering at every single penalty like the english have been in the last couple of years but it was exactly what it was because of that it was the closest they came to beating the Springboks, um, who were eventually the World Cup champions. And he led that English team to what would have been probably one of the biggest, you know, World Rugby or oh, Rugby World Cup um, shocks we would have ever seen. Um, and they were only a couple of points off from it. So, um, so pretty, I mean, unbelievable Saracen's career for him. You know, I think he got five um, premiership titles to his name. Or Champions um, two Cups Champions then. Cups, so yeah. um, you know he's not falling short. And Russing will be will be lucky to have him, but obviously taking him out of contention of English um, selection now, as not well, out of contention out of British and Irish lines, not out of British and Irish, mm. which is what matters next year is going to be unreal. Um, 
hopefully Australia can can sort themselves out. And we'll know soon enough um, with those internationals coming up, which I'm so exciting for, excited yeah. for. I feel like I've been watching so much club rugby. I just want to, like, it Six feels like it's been like about two ago. years since, the, since oh, Six Nations, but also the Boca. It yeah. feels like the Boca won the World Cup two years ago. Um, Jeep is all, it's going to be unreal to to see them, um, particularly with with the home home fans. Um but we for this weekend we can enjoy the last bit of knockout club rugby, obviously with the final um okay, of Northampton versus Bath, um Twickenham this weekend and then yeah, USC um will be two weekends from now. Stevie Dan, let's, are we talk, let's go. We, talk, we, we we have to talk about some every week we talk about football editage. Football editage. It had to let's be get into it. It had to be. And oh, it was man. also the most the most football editage result in terms of them being largely outplayed if, if Real Madrid and, and Dortmund for a long and time. Dortmund were playing so game. much of the football. So yeah. much football. But you don't, you just don't beat Real Madrid in a World Cup final. You don't beat the Springboks World in Cup. a World Cup final. I mean, <laughs> I was going to get my comparison. You don't beat the Springboks in the World Cup final. You don't beat Real Madrid in the Champions League final. Yeah. There are things that just, that. that just, that, you know, there's just a foregone conclusion, really. It's, it's just, it's what makes the world go round, unfortunately. Um, I, I felt for me as soon as they beat City, they were going to be near impossible to beat. Even when, you know, with like um, over over you know three halves against Bayern, Bayern were leading one nil with like what thirty minutes to play. It's it's just never done with them. You know, one slip up from Bayern called the end into the final. I mean, we have to talk about that Adeyemi chance. You know, trying to go around um, Courtois. Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on how he needs to take that? Mm. Yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it's such a – and it's so funny when you think about, like, you know, those split decisions. And I think, yeah, I think whether he hits, you know, for the first time or, or tries to go – look, Courtois played well as well. Um, but it's funny yeah. how the – you know, for all that it's around ball, it's funny how the football goes. When you think about that decision he made and you look at Vinicius Jr.'s goal, which was a – let's be frank and miss it yeah. um which you know bobbled over the heap of top i think so it's it's funny how yes, the, 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 yeah. luck, the luck the luck the luck turns but yeah and i think, he scores I think that. that's just the that's the if if Adiyem was wearing a white shirt with the with the madrid crest on it um yeah. i think he would have scored that yeah, <laughs> you know that, that's, that's how the cookie the, crumbles the, the, the powers to be just determined that you know it's, yeah it's just it's, I, yeah for me i just think he came onto it. it was such a deep ball that no one really saw it coming um that and Courtois had done so well because he was actually quite set. I, I first thought he was running at him, and if he's moving, then you just need to take it first time. But he had actually yeah. set himself quite early and quite far out to put a lot of pressure on Adeyemi. But I just think he took it the wrong way because mm. his always momentum was going towards the right hand side. If you're going to go around and go on your right hand side, that's you're going to be so much faster that way. If you take a touch around, you can also you also protect. Um, the ball with your body that way. So if Courtois goes for you, it's a pen. Um, easy to say, sitting in a in a in a chair um, here, yeah. and when you're not when you're not look, in the I'll, stadium, look, I would have finished it at the end of the day. You know, um, <laughs> we would have been faster than him. We would yeah. have been a better finisher than him. Yeah, I probably, um, would, have, I probably would have chipped Courtois. You know, like the you know the tall <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. over the top. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I mean, Fulkrich hitting the post as well, and then all, and then scoring that offside goal. Uh, I, when they scored that, I was like, "They're back. This is coming." Yeah. And then, obviously, it ruled out. Um, but yeah, I, I saw a lot of um, disappointed um, Dortmund fans on on my tube home on on Saturday nights and 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 walking around London on Sunday morning, um, and a lot of uh, Hala Madrid. Um, Jubilant fans, as mm. I mean, they are just record breakers, right? I mean, we talk number sixteen for the club. I mean, Tony Cruz, what a farewell! You could, you can't ask for anything better, and not just not just winning it, but winning his sixth along with Modric, Nacho, and Carvajal, who also scored the first goal of the game in a, in a header of all things. You wouldn't expect him to do that, being quite short in stature. Um, and then five for Ancelotti, um, and if you add his two as a player taking him up to seven. I mean, it's just, it's, these are ridiculous numbers from, and, and in the last, that's their sixth um, Champions League in the last 11 years. 
So you're talking about one season on, one season off. That's above 50% conversion rate of Champions mm-hmm. League. It's just taken part to winning. Um, I always said I was such a Messi fanboy that there was a point where I believed that Barcelona were the bigger club. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not even close. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's just, there's just levels to the game. At the end of the day, Real Madrid, well clear of Barcelona. Man United, well clear of Liverpool. You know, there's, 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 there's Okay. Um, you know, you can try. You, you can just, try. you just so relieved that Sabitzer and Sancho didn't win that. Oh, when Sabitzer gripped that one, I was yeah, like, I, fair, I, fair, no, I think, I think 50 50. I would have loved to have seen um, Marcel win a Champions League. I enjoyed him at United. I was quite keen to have him stay, actually. Um, but, but Sancho and his, his petulance must go away. away. Okay. Yeah, yeah, easy to say now that he didn't have the, the final of his dreams, but um it can, could have been a very different story had he had he come off on the day. But uh Stevie, you know, so Real Madrid, you think with all the success they can just like continue to um you know, you don't really have to, to change much. You, you you're winning it. And they've only just gone and two days afterwards signed the, the best player in the world, um, in Kylian Mbappe. Uh, to, is that just not the most um, Galactico yeah. signing yeah. that we've ever seen? And ironically, they've been kind of been recently moving away from the whole Galactico approach. You know, they've been trying to sign younger players, the young you know, stars. Like, yeah, you know, the, the Vinicius, the Rodrigo's, the Chami, yeah. the the Camavinga, you know, and, so and it's come Fernand off. It's Mendy, worked. Right? You know, they're not. They're not necessarily. I mean, Jude Bellingham was like a, one of their biggest high-profile signings, but I mean, you're talking about a 20-year-old as well, you know, who's... Yeah, he, he, the they wouldn't have expected the season that he did have um, yeah. in, in their wildest dreams. To be but fair, now it's not like Mbappe is, is, is by any means, uh, you know, pushing time. He's, no, I think he's still no. only 25. So you could still consider him a young signing. But, but you're now you're signing talking about who's like peak of their powers. Arguably, yeah, has one arguably of the, the best player in the world. Yeah. No, he, you, this, he is... I mean, to replace Kareem Benzema, you won a Ballon d'Or. You have a season without him. You cope because G. Billiam decides to go and be case to become a second striker. Yeah. You know, you bring yeah, in Nostradu. It's, it's ridiculous. I was saying, we're saying right at the beginning of the season that if there's a time to beat Madrid in the Champions League, it's this one. They don't have a striker. Yeah. They literally they they didn't. Striker. And they didn't. They just played Jude Bellingham out of position and he became good at it. Just chose yeah. to become a um, a cam, which and that was like, that was Don Carlo. Hey, even the, the, I don't know if you watched any of the post match, but they interviewed Jude and he said, you know, what can you just talk about Ancelotti? And he said he's unlocked a part of his game he didn't know he had in this goal scoring yeah. ability. He was like, he, yeah, as far as he was concerned, runs. he was a midfielder. That's kind of what he does. But uh, Ancelotti said, no, he's closer to the goal he is to better. And and I mean, look how it's worked. So the Don Carlo strikes again, and now you've got to add a Kylian Mbappe into that side. It's just where do you play him? Where do you play him? Through well, the I middle? Think, on the left? Do you play yeah. Vinny through the middle? No, because you you're looking Mbappe. at Vinny and, and Mbappe, the two two of the top three best players in the world, both left wings. No, I, think, you, I think you, both of them are... the middle. Play Mbappe through the middle. I think they will, yeah. Um, I guess that I'll is just... when Mbappe, where Mbappe played when he was with Neymar and Messi at PSG as well. So... Yeah. That kind of that kind of, that does make sense. Um, and then you I mean, dropped Jude a bit, and then Jude, Jude, Jude in behind. Mm. To be fair, I still kind of think Jude's best position is a is a little bit deeper, and doesn't really make sense now that they've just gone on one of the Champions League. But I don't know if he'll. I, I'll be interested to see where he plays in the Euros for England. Yeah, well, I think, I think, I think so England, young, England have a lot so of it. Diff- yeah, I'll take your options. I think you'll, I think you'll, I think you'll drop a deeper in England. I think also the England got Declan Rice. So when you've got the, you know, arguably the best CDM in the world, um, you can, and he's so disciplined as well. A huge call. I don't think well, he's, he's, he's putting ahead of him. CDM in the world. Um, Kamavinga, Tushimani. <laughs> I think this weekend. Yeah, I know. And also I, in and out. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, and, and I still think he's probably better than Declan Rice. <laughs> but anyways, let's, let's not get into that debate. But yeah, yeah, no. Well, he covers he covers grass. That look, he can yeah. run and he, he's say, a beast. He's got a good long ball in him. The, and, the, and, the DM and CDM, true. I don't think he's better. I think Tremini's full of energy, and I think Kamavinga's got a great passing game, um, a better, better passing game. But I don't think anyone's as disciplined as Declan Rice is in front of a four. Which allows yeah. your other midfielders to really run. Rodri, so I think that's we haven't even mentioned, but yeah, uh, yeah. Rodri, Rodri with those stats that he's never been, he hasn't been beaten in like all these like like have you seen that whole thing where like he hasn't been beaten in like 50, 60 games, and you go look at those last 50, 60 games, and he's literally been beaten in some of them. It's like the weirdest <laughs> stat. 
it just doesn't, doesn't make sense. Like they've lost games, they've gone out of like the things, and the stack continues to like he's just undefeated and always like games <laughs> he's never lost a game. Yeah, um, but yeah, essentially, it's just uh, somehow Madrid and theory are going to be better. I mean, we've mm-hmm. seen it before where you add stardom to a really good teams and it doesn't work. I would be surprised if this ends up in being one of those scenarios. Yeah, he, I think he, it's just it's hard to see how he scores thirty Bappe goals. It doesn't season. work in any team. No, he scores thirty know? goals next season, maybe forty. Yeah, uh, he, and and if you if, and if you Barcelona or Atletico, you're also thinking of Liga. It's like, jeez, what are what are we going to do here? Yeah, yeah. Like now you, it's like Mbappe. Cool, you got yeah, Mbappe. Now I've got like a thirty-five year old like- Lewandowski. You know, yeah, it's like it's he's, like oh, he's world class. Good? But you're going like, well, I mean, this is the thing. Madrid have got a team that can win everything for years to come. You know, Kroos is retiring, but you've got Shemini coming through. You've got um, Kamavinga coming through. They just added Endrick as well, by the way. You know, this like the next big Brazilian yes. wonder boy. He's yeah. backing yeah. up Mbappe. Um, yeah. So, you know, the, the depth that they've got is is childish. No, it is, it is ludicrous. Um, and, and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see of, of these players or obviously the ones representing their countries in Europe, the Mbappes, Bellinghams, um, how that form continues there because yeah. that always gets us excited um, for the, for the um, you know, the, it's a bit of preseason um, essentially for clubs and that that's starting the weekend after next. First games, Germany versus Scotland, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that properly next week when um, yeah. there'll be a lot of buzz around it. I love the but, Euros though. It's, not, it's, it's signing season now for the clubs. You know, where, who's going to be that, yeah. um, you know, there's, 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 we'll start a little fat- rumour mill um, segment for, for the transfers um, yeah. in, in the coming weeks and, and we'll, we'll give you the, the highs and lows of that. I, I um, just love, I love to see who's going to be that player that you, no one's really heard. Who's going to be the Locatelli? of this tournament, you know, where yeah. like you go into the tournament and you kind of these players, but one player just has an absolute blind and all of a sudden he's found himself with a decent team, you know, yeah. that, you know, James Rodriguez looking at looking yeah. an entire career off one I mean, World Cup. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, even you no know, one had really heard of Cody Gakpo until the last World Cup and then Liverpool signed yeah. him. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You now know, he's kind of growing as a player as well. Football's so not hard. It, you just peak. You just you just, you just play for peak like at the right times. Yeah, you, you you play you play for not a, a nation that's not necessarily uh, expected to do well. You have a couple of big underdog stories, and you are the star of that team. So you play well for three or four games, and and off you go. Asmo Gian, you know all these all these lads who just uh, you, know, you pick, pick the pick the right tournament. You know, yeah, and no, or big game players. To be fair, yeah. big game players. If you can do it at the World Cup, why why couldn't you do it at club level? Maybe well, not a, a lot of people ask that question, stuck. to be fair. But, uh, <laughs> but Dan, speaking of uh, big tournaments and big games, the Paris are winning the World Cup. We are they, on, we they, on board with this, eh? They, they, they are, Stevie, they are. Um, you know, massive chase from the Proteas, um, having been set um, 77 <laughs> to win. To be fair, I don't think anyone knew if they were playing in Adelaide or if they were playing in New York. And, and when I saw the tweet go out by the Proteas saying, uh, Proteus secure W in New York. I was just like, that's just nothing I ever thought I'd I'd see tweeted um, from from any um, South African cricket account. Um, Before we even talk about the game, which commentary were we listening to? Were you, did you have Dale Stane and the buggers? I had Dale Stane and so Steve you had Smith. The, and and the baseball guy who had never played cricket before. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I get it. The whole point of this tournament is to tr- is to grow the the game of cricket, which is also why they are involving. You know, no, Oman, Papua I, New Guinea, Uganda, yeah. and, and I understand. And I, and I understand you want to try and then have a, a a local guy. Can we not find? I'm pretty sure most Americans know how baseball works. Could we not find a, a an American guy who's actually played cricket, or just knows both sports, or just knows? I mean, yeah, I mean, no, Dale, stands, Dale stands in the con box there, and he's sitting there like, yeah, guys, um, and he's listening to this guy talk about baseball, and he's like, and and have, and have you played cricket? And he's like. Yeah, like I played some table cricket, and it's just like silence. And you can just yeah. like, they must be sitting in the box going, "What the hell have I signed up for here?" Yeah, no, it it it, it wasn't it it wasn't great. I, I, like I can see what they're trying to do. They're really trying to tap into that that American audience. Um, I hope whoever that guy is is has got a prolific following. Because at least then hopefully he brings some. Yeah, there, some there must viewers. be something. But even then, <laughs> and, they're, and they're talking about the stadium, and they're like, they asked him, "So what was here before? Like this is a temporary stadium." He's like, "I don't know, maybe someone's favorite picnic spot." I was like, "Guys, 
Yeah. No, <laughs> this is like the, the showpiece event of the year. Can we not at least be able to say this was a park before and now look what this just is? Get, like, just get, it, get an American who's excited to, to be there, not, not, yeah. not someone who's never watched the sport and happens to play baseball because it's, it's not the same sport. There are a lot of comparisons you can draw between the two, but get someone I mean, who, who has played both and is passionate about both. Listen, maybe there, maybe there's um, you know less than five of those, so they were, they were shipping them across different parts of the World Cup right now, yeah, and we got the we got the 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 sixth sure, sure. Um, yeah, yeah. But essentially, but, as, as as you said, let's 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 tell the story. It, it wasn't. Yeah. It is a completely um, new stadium. Um, they've set up in a park, um, not Central Park, as apparently was also misquoted on on commentary. It's not in Manhattan, but um, in New York, nonetheless. Um, and the pitch brought all the way from Adelaide. Um, I would have loved to have seen how they actually did that, but um, naturally there, there isn't, isn't yeah, on a boat. Yeah, <laughs> likely, I guess. Um, DHL plane, who knows? Um, yeah, meow. But, but yeah, you could see, I mean, it was a bit of a rat trap, right? That, that scorecard, um, you know, Sri Lanka being bowled out for 77, um, South Africa chasing it, 80, um, 80 runs, but four wickets down in, in 16 overs. So you're talking and drawing, you can't even draw any comparisons to what it was like in the IPL. Yeah. Um, where everyone was going at over, over kind of scoring over 200. So a r- complete rat trap of a pitch itself. And which begs the question kind of why um, Sri Lanka chose to, to bat first because everyone, everyone kind of brought that into question and it seemed to have backfired because I think that was a massive, Mass decision in the in the outcome of this game. Yeah, look, it was it was and look, we bowled so well. And uh, what was cool to see it was that because it was a bit of a sticky a sticky pitch, um, that test match line that they that we just stuck to, um, you know, on a good length outside of I mean, Oatmeal Bartman didn't miss a single ball. You know, he was phenomenal. Oatmeal, uh, what and, a guy! I mean, I first ball of his World Cup. Cricket first time cricket. playing cricket. First time playing cricket outside of South Africa, Stevie. First ball um, for the Proteas in a World Cup gets yeah. a stick. I mean, it's it's Cheers. it's a story that writes itself. Yeah, I mean, I'm not here. Everybody complaining about why is he in the squad? Should he be there? Bad form in the IPL. Yada yada yada. Cocking one fifties. Best T20 stats of all time: four wickets for seven runs and four. An economy of less than two. Um, it's a bit childish. Ridiculous. KG looked looked at his best. Keshav was on a hat trick, bowled nicely. Um, you know, everyone. Even, you know, uh, Marco Janssen, who was. So expensive during the World Cup, um, bold nice as well. So it was, we, you know, it's, we, it's, it's a difficult, a difficult match to analyze because it was a bad, bad, bad wicket. But at the end of the day, bowlers pitched up and and the bats batsmen got batters got their job done. So job done. Yeah, I mean, Quinny twenty rounds of twenty seven. That's a Test match strike rates here. Yeah, um, stubs thirteen of twenty eight. Thirteen so, of twenty eight, Markram twelve of fourteen, class at nineteen of twenty two. You know, these are not players that go below um, you know, a strike rate of a hundred. Um, but you could see and and it's kind of even uh, you know, I think I mean Reza played a bit of a nothing shot um at a very at a swinging ball. Quinton just chipped his back to to Hasaranga um after doing well to kind of I think get to twenty, just like kind of working through it and a bit of a nothing shot. Stubbs, you could see it was just it was tossed up, and he, he just he had to hit, go and smash a cover drive there. Um, Markram ones kind of popping up a little bit, and then Klaus and Miller not getting out. But like you had to apply yourself, and yeah. um, and and you just have to be thankful that um, the bowlers did enough of a job because I think another thirty runs could have made it a very very tricky chase because we only had four of us left, right? Like that, it it would have been would have forced us to play a couple more shots early on in our innings and, you know, could have gone the other way. Yeah. No, so I think that's the thing. Because the Sri Lanka bowlers were good. No, they, they were really good. Um, I mean, Aiden Markham still, you know, providing that shot of the day with a cover drive for six. Oh, um, he's just the best cover good. driver. Yeah. In, he's so well, him, good. Him and Vera. Second only to, no, well, him and those two second only to Laura, Laura Wolfart. Um, True. But True. yeah, so look at the, at the end of the day, we got the job done. We're playing uh, the Netherlands this weekend. We've got Bangladesh on Monday. Um, in terms of how the, f- the format works, before we move on to a bit of tennis, is after the group stages, here, the top two teams across the four groups go into a different two groups, four teams there, top two, then go into semifinals and finals. So if we top the group, we'll probably play the likes of a Pakistan, India, Ireland, potentially Australia, England. Those kind of teams will probably be in that uh, waiting for us. West Indies, New Zealand, Afghanistan, those teams potentially waiting for us in that second. Uh, super eight as well. Second as we get there. 
Um, but Dan, we were talking about it before. Yeah, it is uh, tennis season. It is the French Open at the moment, and we are into quarterfinals this weekend. So uh, some interesting ones. If we look at the men's draw, we've got uh, Dimitrov and Sinner today. We've got Tsitsipas and Alcaraz as That's well. Massive. So my boy Alcaraz, uh, I'm, I'm backing him all the way. Um, tomorrow, I think it's... Um, it's very Zverev and Demana. Uh, Demana. And then you've got Novaks versus Rude. Um, also a massive one. Those are my two, well. two two quarterfinals that I'll, I'll have my eyes glued to. Yeah, so that, that's going to be that's going to be fun to to watch. And uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, as a Rafa as a Rafa fan, it's it's anyone with Novak at the moment. I've got to try and protect his legacy. So Alcaraz needs to start clutching up and uh, <laughs> and, and notching up some majors, bringing um, up bringing up his Spanish, helping his Spanish brother. Correct. Um, correct. Fight of the greater evils, hey. Yeah, and then in the women's division, um, we've got uh, Kuki Gauff versus Yabir t- today, um, Swiatek versus Monjasova, and then tomorrow we've got Paulini versus Rybkina, and then Andreeva versus Sabalenka, who is one of the favorites of the tournament. Cool. She's, she gets around on Sabalenka. I think she was at the Formula 1 last weekend. Um, loves a good... All uh, over the show. Yeah, no, often, often around there. And, and uh, but Jordan, good draws. Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. No, good, very good, good draws. draws for the for the French Open. Yeah. Um, yeah. The last thing is when you, when you when you see these and look, there are a couple of outsiders like you know, I mean, Andriva, for example, didn't, they didn't expect her to go that far. But you know, if you look at the men's draw, you're seeing one, three, seven, four, two, eleven, nine, ten. You know, all everyone's the, so, the, the, the highest rank is eleven. Yeah, so in, in a top eight, so you know, you're not missing a lot. Of the, you are looking at the best players. That's box office, um, yeah, yeah, in in the tournament. So. Very keen to see that. Roland Garros is always a lot of fun. And for a lot of tennis fans, the traditional tennis fans, at the end of Roland Garros means that Wimbledon's around the corner. You know, Ooh. and I was at Roland Garros last year. That's where the World Cup uh, media zone was based in Paris. So, um, okay, I thought you were going to say you watched it. I was like, I missed that. No, no, no. You are, you are, I wish. Well, that was the thing. So, I was, so I was, I was, we were based there. At so, the I've seen some of the corners. Yeah, we're actually Unreal. inside the, the, the main stadium. Like, the, under the tennis editage. Yeah, so it was it was a lot of fun. Um, the, the most expensive uh, gift store in the world. Like, there was a jersey there that was, I think it worked out to about ten grand. Yeah, thousand and it was like we, we look, like you're talking about a couple of hundred euros for all the Lacoste stuff. And I almost bought every. I wanted to buy absolutely everything. Yeah, no, the coolest gift enough. shop in the world, by the way. If you ever want, like, if you ever want to like see how to get. Like merchandise, right? Go to that right garage. <laughs> Bro, there's so nothing I love more than a bit of sports merch. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll break the bank for sports merch. Um, Stevie, let's quickly get into um, the predictions for this weekend. Yeah. Though we've got, we're gonna go, we're gonna start with um, the Premiership final. Right, we've got Northampton um, versus Bath. Um, are you, have you got a score in your mind? Yeah, I do. Okay. Three, two, one. Northampton by, by three. Five. I knew you were going Northampton. I've got to back, got to back and I knew you were going Bath as well. I knew yeah. you were going Bath. <laughs> I'm not going Bath. I'm going, I'm going Finn Russell FC. Yeah, you're going Finn Russell. You're going Finn Russell. Yeah. I'm going Courtney Laws. Latoy. And Thomas Latoy. Sorry, when, he, when he's watching this. I back you as well, Tommy. But, uh, <laughs> Thomas the Tank and my boyfriend. Okay. Cool. Locked in. Um, then we have got um, Glasgow Warriors uh, versus Stormers. Um this um Saturday, I believe. Yes, Saturday. Saturday, Hopper State. Um, what our Hopper time? Hopper State. Hopper State. Time. Hopper State. My time. Um, Stevie, have you got a score in mind? I do. You do have a score in mind, okay? I do. As, uh, as do I. Um, okay. Three, two, one. Storm is by, by six. Yeah, and you, you, I know you're, you're going point, again, but two, but three got- point wins. I've got it back, and you and and you can you can you know this from a while back. I'll go back my second team in the URC, which is Glasgow, my boys, um, and also a little pissed off at the Stormers because you're the reason we're not playing. I do actually like Glasgow. I probably want yeah, them no, to it, win it is, next I think, uh, out of any of the other teams. So yeah, look, um, I, 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 want, I want to see Stormers win. Um, you, you want to you, you got to see our South African teams doing well. Um, I'm surprised to hear that, but okay, I'll take it. No, I don't. I think it's it's you got to you got to it's it's good to see from a mentality point of view these players playing in big games and stuff like that. You know, like I'm only he's played in two finals and stuff like that. So like the whole idea that he's not a big game player is a lot of crap. Um, so I like to see our South African players exposed to you know mm. this kind of yeah. kind of pressure. It's good for the it's good for the country. It's going right? to be a hell of a run if Stormers get the win here. Jeez, yeah. they'll probably have to go three away games in a row, which would be yeah. pretty insane when you're considering the the opposition. 
Yeah, so again, but I was like, I was, I have to start taking heart out of these predictions. So my head says Glasgow, so I'm backing Glasgow wow. at the prediction because I think, I think Glasgow at home are a different kettle of fish. Uh, I think Stormers travel badly. Um, so I think it's a bad combo. Fair enough, fair enough. Hard, hard to argue. And then last one, um, Proteas versus Netherlands um, this Saturday. The bogey team for the Proteas. Yeah. And I, was I think just I'd rather, I think I'd rather play I'm just India. so glad that this um, isn't our last game of the group stage yeah. as it was in the last T20 World Cup where we famously bottled it. Um, it's getting to a stage where I said, I think I'd rather play like an India or Australia in the, in the World T20 final than Netherlands because yeah. just, like, we just got so, beat this house. So, so, I mean, and and on the, on the pitch, we're playing at the exact same stadium in New York. We're playing, mm-hmm. I think, three different games there. So, um, would it even out? I'm not sure. Maybe a couple more um, rollers. Maybe hopefully they have a, some rollers yeah. in New York. Um, but yeah, Stevie, have you got a prediction around? We're going to go uh, runs in wickets. Cool, we're, going, we're both going to South Africa, so we're both going. To, so we, we know that we're going to South Africa to win. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Well, then if you're not, then uh, tell me now. You gotta, okay. You know, well, let's let's go. Let's let let let's start with um. Let's start with runs. Um, I. I'm ready. Just runs, or are we going at the team button runs? Well, two team runs. Do you stop okay. putting out a Netherlands win? Yeah, we're gonna have to three, keep it two, one. South Africa SA forty runs. Yeah, okay. that's gonna be big. Um, and then wickets. Um, have you got one? Yeah. Okay, yeah, three. Two, one, seven. Say by five. Yeah. Okay. So you, I've gone. I've gone bigger. Yeah, which... you've gone bigger. You, you're backing us to not to not struggle um, to break the duck. Uh, yeah. You know, to, no. and and to just clutch no. up. I think I it think it's already decent. Well, there's no get out. Of... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rich, quick as the half of them are South African. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> And, or or and, Indian, I mean, or <laughs> yeah, it's it's also wild when you think you've got England playing in this tournament, but we went with the Netherlands as the colonizers. <laughs> yeah, you know the Afrikaans manner. Um, but yeah, no, it should it should it should be good. Um, hopefully, hopefully the protests can continue their momentum, um, use that experience um, on this wicket. I'm not sure if Netherlands will have played on it by that stage, but at least what's quite nice to know is that they won't be traveling too much, um, yeah. which is nice. So the boys can rest up until um, this game on Saturday. Correct. Dan, always a pleasure. Um, Thank you I'm very much, to Stevie. Go and uh, yeah, find something to keep me warm for the rest of the day. I might just be like under a blanket or something and uh, avoiding the outdoors. Um, um, I wish I could say I was going to go out and catch a tan, but uh, that'll be me next week. So oh, when we go. check in, it, it'll it'll be a pink face, bro. Okay, look, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so enjoy okay. the rest of the week, yeah. Enjoy the weekend Thank of, of, of sport, you. and nice to have some cricket on the screens. And to everybody else, uh, smash a like on the video, subscribe uh, or follow or whatever you are, uh, whatever you can do on the platform you are listening slash watching this on. Um, we are going to be jumping into the socials. So uh, you can follow us on Between Two Fans. We'll be on Instagram. We'll be on TikTok. You know, the usuals. You go and find us. Um, send this uh, to your dog and show it to your dog's neighbor as well. Um, <laughs> over the fence. Over the fence as well. Yeah, send it, it to that the dog's Instagram account. Yeah, correct. Correct. <laughs> um, get, your, get your cats involved as well. You know, put it in front of the fish tank. Yes. Uh, yeah. They, 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 they need to know what's happening between um, Finn Smith and Finn Russell. As yeah. Well. And the nice thing about putting in front of the fish tank is you can just put in a repeat so they can just watch it for the first time, maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. No, it's, so, it's, 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 it's entertainment for them and views for us. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So it's a win win situation. Um, but yeah, Dan, keep well. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Stevie. See you at the next one.